Today I want to start work on a sliding door bolt that will not only be able to lock with a padlock, but it will work on either a right hand swing door or a left hand swing door. So let's get started. I'm going to leave the latch bar long for now so that I can support it on a work stand and that's going to make it easier to punch. Then I'm going to hang a chain from it and that will help hold it in place for me. Remember to keep your punch cool in use. A little bit of coal dust helps prevent the punch from sticking, or you can use a commercially available punch lube. Well, it looks like I got that off a little bit. I wasn't quite straight up and down punching through. I probably started to try and punch through from the back a little bit early, but I think we're going to be able to save it. This is a great place to employ a little hot rasping to clean that raggedy bit up. Okay, I think this is going to work out just fine. One side is a little rough because of that off-sitter punching, but that's where the tab is going to insert from, and it's going to be larger than what the hole is. So that shoulder should hide that raggediness. Then the other side flares out a little bit, so in use when I put that tab in or the hasp part, the tenon on that will get peened down into that, and that way it can't ever come out because it's going to be larger on the top. It doesn't need a big proud rivet on top. But you could do that if that's what you want to do. So I'm going to let this cool. Next thing to do is make the hasp. For the hasp, I'm going to start with a piece of 3 8 by 1 and a half inch flat stock. This is just a random length. I'm going to go ahead and draw out the handle portion, punch the slot, and then we'll cut it off. That just gives me a little extra material to hold on to. Makes my life a little easier. I'm going to start by folding a shoulder using the smithing magician.
I'm actually going to put two shoulders on this. I want to isolate an inch and a half at the end that will become a ball finial for the handle. If you've been watching the videos here at Black Bear Forge for any length of time, you'll know I'll use the Smith & Magician quite often. It's a real convenient tool, and it's one I get a lot of questions about. The good news is this is still available to buy. It's currently being carried by Blacksmith Supply, who just happens to be the sponsor for today's video. Just about anything you're looking for in blacksmithing, there's a pretty good chance Blacksmith Supply is going to have it. Besides the Smith & Magician, they have everything from anvils to hot mill gloves, wire brushes. There's a link in the video description with a coupon code that'll get you 5% off on your next order. My understanding is that is good for just about anything in the shop, except for treadle hammers. Next, we need to draw this out from where the hasp ends to where the finial is, so we've got a nice, long, graceful handle. Now this can certainly be drawn out entirely at the anvil by hand, but it's also a great time to take a power hammer break. Folded in a little bit too far on the transition between the handle part and the finial, and I think that's going to cause a problem in the long run. There's a real good chance that that's going to get stressed as I forge the finial, and I'm just going to end up breaking that off. So I started over again, made another one, left it much thicker here. If I want to make it more slender and graceful in the long run, I can do that after we do the finial. But before I do that, I want to go ahead and punch the slot that the hasp will engage the staple. Now I don't have a slot punch as large as I want to make this slot, so I'm just going to go ahead and drill the holes at either end and then come back and chisel out the waste in between. Make sure you put a soft plate down before cutting all the way through into your anvil.
Next I want to make a couple of staples and then we'll use these as a guide as I file and clean up that slot. I'm going to use a cold chisel and device to shear off the majority of the rag on this. I'm going to even up the slot by drifting it. Next I want to turn this lump that I left on the end into a round ball or something similar to a round ball. I'm not worried about creating cold shuts within that finial. As long as I don't have cold shuts at the transition point, it's not going to hurt anything and it's just not worth stressing out about. We'll do some of this in the vise, some of it at the anvil. I don't remember what I made this for, but it's essentially a spring fuller that holds things in a vise so that you don't leave sharp shoulders on it. It doesn't really work like a fuller, just made like one. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way that ball came out. That's just what I was looking for. Next thing I want to do is I want to put a bend out so there's something to grab down here to actually operate this latch. But there's got to be room for a padlock to hang here. I've got this reproduction of an antique padlock. It's probably a pretty cheap reproduction. I'm going to use it for a size guide. Any modern lock is probably going to be much smaller than this. So if that's there, I can put a bend right in there and compare that to my anvil. Because this lock is almost as tall as my anvil is wide, I can just use that as a measurement. I don't want to mess up that ball end, so I'm going to use a rawhide mallet to bend this.
I took the parts that I've got roughed out so far and spent a little bit of time mocking up the back plate to make sure that all my proportions are going to work. It really stinks when you slide the bolt over and it falls out of the keepers, or worse yet, doesn't clear the door and you can't open the door. So you got to kind of try this stuff out, mock it up, do it before you've actually assembled anything or before you cut things to the final length, and that's going to make your life a lot easier. So this is what I've got so far. The bolt will be able to slide equally from left to right, and that allows for the keeper on the jam side of this to be on either a left-hand door or a right-hand door. This will work either direction. It's just take it off of here and put it over there. And I have plenty of room for the hasp to clear on both sides. And of course, room for the staples in there. Now I did lay this out with a half inch gap between the main back plate and the back plate for just the keeper. And I did that because I think in use, most people don't want to put it right on the edge of the door or right on the edge of the jam. This gives me enough room for them to have that little bit of a clearance there. But that is my next task to go ahead and cut this to size and then drill the holes to get ready for putting all this stuff together. Still got a few more parts to make and a few parts to refine and sub-assemblies, things like that. But I just want to get this back plate done and out of my way right now. The next part we're going to need is what the bolt actually slides through and slides into the keeper on the side of the door. For that I've got a piece of half inch by inch and three quarter just because it's what I had. I would probably prefer half by inch and a half but I don't have any of that in stock and I'm not going to go buy any for this project. Since this needs a hole a little over three quarters of an inch in diameter, I'm going to go ahead and punch that under the power hammer. That's pretty close. I think I'll do the final fit with a file. But I also have another version of this in my mind, and I thought I'd try making one of those as well, just to see what I like better. This version I'm going to lay out, drill, and then grind the profile onto it.
It should be much more precise, but it may lack the character of the forged piece. Now the forged version of this has a little more character to it, but it's probably a little less precise in its fit and finish. For a project like this, that's not likely to matter very much. But I also like the one that was done cold at a bench. I guess you can call it machined, even though those machines were simply drill press and a grinder. And I really can't decide which one of these I like the best. I'm gonna let you decide. I'm gonna create a poll in the community tab, and I'll put a link to that down in the video description and maybe a pinned comment. Go to that poll and vote on whether you like the machine version of the Keeper or the forged version of the Keeper. Simple enough. But anyways, that's where I'm going to leave the video for today. We'll pick this up again next week where I'll do some detail work, maybe some ornamentation, and try and get this latch assembled. See if it works. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.